I'm not just gonna be organizing my coat closet, I'm gonna be giving it a full makeover. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I am Carla from Vintage Chip Decor, and right now we are in the foyer of our home where our coat closet is located. We have a pretty standard coat closet. There's nothing actually too terribly wrong with it besides the fact that it's definitely not organized. We have too many shoes in here and they're kind of piled up and there's definitely some things that we can take out so that this space can function a little bit better for our family. But we don't just wanna organize the space, we wanna give it a complete makeover because why not beautify the space while we're here working on it? We do lots of decorating and makeover and organizing videos here on our YouTube channel. So if that sounds fun to you and you wanna keep hanging out with me, then go ahead and subscribe. So our coat closet has fallen so much out of function that we have even overflow of jackets on like a coat rack out here in our foyer, which is okay. We like the coat rack. It's pretty for like decorating reasons and like one or two coats on there looks nice. But right now it's like a workhorse. <laughs> it's housing things that really should be in this closet. So before I get started with taking everything out of this closet, I wanted to show you a little bit of the inspiration for what we're aiming for with this makeover. The goal is to get some baskets up on the top shelf instead of shoes to maybe paint a fun design on the back wall and then to make wall-to-wall -wall shelves towards the bottom where shoes can be stored. So of course the first step to this makeover is to take everything out of the closet and give it a good cleaning because the shoes have definitely made it kind of dirty in here so I have to vacuum and clean all of that up. garbage picker upper. Nifty. Why we have so many shoes on the top shelf, I can't tell you. Now that I have the closet all cleaned out, I got a better look at what the wall situation looks like. Cause I know that the shoes scuffed up the walls quite a bit. And I knew that I was either gonna have to clean all the scuff marks off the wall or repaint the walls. So because of the amount of scuff marks, I think it's gonna be just as much effort to repaint the inside of this closet as it would be to take the time to scrub all of the scuff marks off of the closet. And another reason I'm kind of in favor in just going ahead and repainting the inside of the closet white is because I actually don't know what the current wall color is on the walls in this closet and I'm gonna be painting a design on it later. And if I mess up that design, there will be no way for me to kind of like repaint over whatever I messed up and fix it. So if I first paint the wall color, then do my design, I know what color it is and can repaint and fix my issue. So even though it's like a whole extra step, it's just gonna be nicer in the end to just go ahead and repaint the whole inside of this closet. Oh, and one more thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this shelf out as well because I wanna stain the rod anyway and it's gonna make it easier to paint the wall so the shelf is gonna come out. This might be a little tricky to take but down by myself. Sometimes you just gotta pull it out. That last screw was just spinning and spinning and spinning, which means it wasn't like in anything anyway, so it just needed to be ripped out. Not just like crazy. I am definitely risking my biscuit by not changing into paint clothes, but whatever. Yeah, I already have drips all over my jeans. Why do I do this? I gotta go fix that. <laughs> it's not too bad. I can fix it. But now it's gonna take time for me to fix it. 
I quickly went and changed into some paint clothes like I should have done in the first place and then I was ready to finish painting the inside of this closet. So I just did one coat of white paint on the inside of the closet and while that was drying I went through some of my leftover paint and mixed a just like kind of taupey color that I am now gonna take a three inch sponge brush and I am going to make a design on this back wall. So it's not gonna be the whole closet, just the back wall. And I'm basically just going to like, well, not that, definitely not that. I'm gonna stamp a little design on the back of the wall. I think it'll look really nice. And I'm gonna start towards the bottom of the closet because we are gonna put shelves. And so if I mess up at all, kind of while I'm finding my rhythm for the pattern, it'll be down towards the bottom where no one will see it. Okay, here is how it is going so far. So it definitely took me some time to figure out my rhythm. I like some of these lines a lot better than others, but I can maybe go through and touch up a little bit, but probably not, because I think once like the whole wall is done, the mistakes will kind of fade out. But as you saw, I'm just stamping, did a couple, I don't know, this has to be like almost a hundred lines, just like, you know, several hundred more to go. Oh my God. And when I was done painting all of those lines, it looked a little something like this. The next day, I started by removing the brackets from the top shelf so that I could spray paint them black. My spray paint can malfunctioned, so it just sprayed continuously, but typically you want to spray in small, quick, and even bursts so that you don't get too much spray paint on your projects because that can lead to drips. Next, I headed outside with my dad to cut some wood for the shelves. We just used some wood that we had left over from another project and we cut it down to the width of the closet. Then we took those pieces and ripped them lengthwise to create a clean straight edge. The plan was to take two pieces of wood and put them side by side to create one shelf at the depth that we needed. Then it was time to sand the wood smooth just to get rid of any rough patches or splintery parts. After that I used this General Finishes gel stain in the color Nutmeg to stain all of the wood. All of the products that I use in this video will be linked for you down in the description. Gel stain is thicker than most stains, so you apply a liberal amount and then just wipe away the excess with a shop towel. And after I was staining each one, I just took it inside to dry because it was really cold outside. I repeated this process until all the wood was stained on one side. Then I also went ahead and stained the rod that the coats were hanging on so that it would match the shelves. The last thing that we cut was also just some wood that we had left over that we could use for supports for the shelves. We cut these pieces a couple inches shorter than the depth of the shelves and then cut the front part of it at a 45 degree angle so that the supports would be hidden under the shelves. Inside, my dad used drywall anchors and screws to install the shelf supports in the closet. He then rested and attached the shelves to those support pieces. Every part of this was making a mess, so I vacuumed up some of that mess and then it was time to hang the top shelf. My dad started by finding the studs in the wall and then hung the two brackets. Next, he attached the first part of the top shelf. Then he secured the rod into place, then finished with the last part of the shelf. After all that work, we realized that the shelf was two inches too high, so we had to lower it. All of that install of the shelves made a bit of a mess, so I vacuumed again and wiped down the shelves and worked on some touch-ups. Lastly, I finished the shelves with this General Finishes High Performance Top Coat in the Sheen Flat to make them more wipeable and durable. And when it was finally all done, this is what it looked like.
And of course, now comes the fun part. It is time to style it. I got matching wood hangers to replace the old ones so that it would look nice and uniform. And these will be linked down in the description for you as well. We knew we wanted baskets for the top shelf, so we headed to Home Goods to see what we could find. We found two baskets that we liked, so in the first one, we will be storing gloves and scarves. And in the second one, we will keep all of our winter hats. I also stuck this little faux plant in the corner just to add some greenery. And now it's time for the jackets. I also just added some extra hangers for when we get guests. I put this little galvanized bucket in the corner for storing our umbrellas in. I like that the bucket will protect the shelves from any moisture from when we use these in the rain. Then I finished it all off by adding our shoes. Now that it's all done, it's time for the big reveal and all of the before and afters. fun hanging out with me for this closet transformation. It definitely ended up being a little bit bigger of a project than I anticipated, but doesn't that always happen? We tackle a project and we're like, it's just going to take a couple hours. It'll be fine. And then it ends up taking longer than that and being a bigger mess than you anticipated. But I think that the end result in this case was so worth it. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. But thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that this inspired you to see your own home in a new light. I got a lot of highlighter on my nose. <laughs> She's lit to the nines. I'm gonna show you what it looks like now and some of the <sighs> washing machine. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. No, no. We are gonna be giving it a full maker over. I am Carla from Vintage Hip to risk in my biscuit.